I want to speak to you from the subject, Get Ready for the Rain. I need you to touch three people and say, I don't know if you know it. But the famine is over. This is a prophetic message. You don't have to shout for you see it. <laughs> you don't have to praise him. Because I'm telling you, the rain is falling. And you just have to prepare to receive it. This text is an odyssey with Elijah from famine, drought, to rain. Famine, drought, rain. I don't know if you realize it or not, but know how, no matter how anointed you are, you will go through famine. No matter how spiritual you are, you will face famine. No matter how much you pay your tithe, give your anniversary offering, you're going to go through famine, lack, times where things seem to dry up rather than there being an overflow and an increase. Everything seems to be barren and dry. Elijah is one of the most powerful prophets of the Old Testament, but here he is caught in the middle of a famine. And when you're in famine, it is important that you connect to God to get a word, get a word from him. I was many, many years ago when I first got married and first was pastoring and we were going, myself and Pastor Lois was going through a dry spell. I heard the Lord say to me, go to the bank and check your account. Now that was ridiculous to me because I knew nothing was in it. But you have to in famine hear the word of the Lord. We were banking with Citibank at that time and so I went to the bank, to the ATM and looked at my account. There was $300 in it. I don't know how it got there to this day. I don't know how it got there. $300 in a blank account. The Lord will make a way somehow. I don't know how it got there, but I didn't care. I took out $30 and went and got me some shrimp lobster sauce. And praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. God's got a way of making a way for you in famine. He said, go by the brook Chirifen. I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Be careful with your ravens. It is interesting that God didn't send a dove, a clean bird. A raven is a scavenger. Ravens don't even feed their young. God will make people bless you that don't even like you. I'm learning how to receive the ravens. God will let your neighbor hit the number so they can pay your rent for three months. 
Don't you turn that raven away talking about they playing the number. That ain't right. You didn't play it, baby. They played it. Let them pay your rent. Mm -hmm. God will let a family member hit the lotto so they can pay your house off. Yes, the ravens. I keep preaching that if you let me go buy a drug raid and they throw $300,000 in a suitcase out that window and it fall in my hands, mm -hmm. see what I do with it. Isn't that evidence? Yeah, evidence that the Lord will make a way out of nowhere. Why should I give it to the cops for them to split it up? I'm going to take that money. But isn't it dirty money, Bishop? Not after I get my hands on it. The blood will clean up anything. God will send ravens to feed you unusual, unexpected ways to get you through a bad time. Yes, but you got to hear his word now he next says uh, that the brook dries because when god wants to move you he'll let things dry up on you it's just to get your attention and get another word from the lord god what's happening here i don't understand it i teach pastors that when two things happen in your church when the spirit is not as as glorious as it usually is and when the money starts dropping then there's something you've got to go to God and see what's happening. Mm -hmm. He'll give you a word as to what's going on and he'll tell you what to do. He uses a drying brook to get your attention. Because a lot of us don't pay enough attention to God until stuff starts happening in our life that we can't handle. And then all of a sudden our focus gets right and we go back to God. He says now, go to this widow's house. I've commanded her to feed you. He gets to the widow's house. She's making her last meal to die with her and her son. Elijah says something interesting to her because there's a debate over this text. Preachers are preaching that I cannot preach this text like I'm getting ready to explain it to you. That I'm not being exegetically correct, but I don't think they're right. I've taken hermeneutics. I've been to Bible school. He says to her, do what you said you're going to do. But before you make anything for your family, make something for me. Now, most people will say, greedy preacher, <laughs> insensitive prophet, why would you tell a woman on her last to cook something for you, feed you, while her son gets nothing till you finish eating? Well, you have to understand the prophetic order of God. It's head first. When a baby is born, how is it born? Head first. If you get the head out, then the rest of the body comes out. This woman had flour, but Elijah had favor with God. This woman had meal, but Elijah had a miracle. You cannot give to the house of God and to the leader of God and God leave you in a hole. Whatever you make happen for God's house, God will make happen for you. I don't have time to prove that to you. I have a text for it. But if you show up to God's house, he'll show up to yours. If you bless God in his house, he'll show up to your house and bless you. If you meet the needs of this house, God will meet the needs of your house. I will open the windows of heaven for you and pour you out a blessing there's not room enough to receive. He that gives a cup of cold water to a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Whatever you do for the man of God, God's going to do for you. If he is the head and you put him in a bad car, your car is coming. If he is the head and you put him in a wonderful house, now your house is going to be released. If he is the head and he doesn't have to worry about anything because you're financially taking care of him, then God's going to fix it so you don't have to worry about anything. Look at somebody and tell them, feed Elijah first. 
I know that takes faith. I know it don't make sense. I know it sounds ridiculous. But somehow when you take what you have and bless Elijah, God sees your faith and says, I'm going to do something for you that's going to help you survive your famine. He didn't just ask for a meal. He gave her a prophecy. For thus saith the Lord. The meal barrel will not run out. Nor the cruise of oil. Every time you go back. There's going to be something else. Mm -hmm. You're not going to make it. By uh, expansion and increase. You're going to make it. One dip at a time. One meal at a time. One dip at a time but every time you go back there's going to be something more your family is about to get right your future is about to be blessed everything you touch God's going to work a miracle you praised him in famine you gave in famine you did what you needed to do in famine now get ready for the rain Just because the rain is here and I'm five more minutes and I'm through doesn't mean that you can relax. Mm -hmm. Elijah said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. And he went into heavy prayer. Intercession. He took his head and put it between his legs. You have to understand in this culture, that was the birthing position. When women went into labor, they took their head and put it between their legs until the baby was born. Can I help somebody in here? The pain that you're feeling now is not the pain of tribulation. It is not the pain of trouble. It is the pain of contractions. There is something about to be birthed out of you that has never been birthed out of you before. Destiny is being birthed. Miracles are being birthed. Favor is being birthed. Breakthrough is being birthed. Your money is being birthed. Now take your head, put it between your knees, and get in the birthing position. Because it's getting ready to rain. I need you to give God a praise for what he's about to sin needs you to get excited in an expectation of the buffing that's coming out of you after your famine. He says to the servant, would you, would you go up and see if you see what I hear? The servant goes up and says, uh, I don't see nothing. Mm -hmm. Yes, I don't see nothing. You, you got to be able to trust God in nothing days, nothing months, nothing weeks. Has anybody made it on empty? He went back, put his head between his knees. You'll have to understand the text. It was not that he went seven times or sent him seven times. What happened here was he came back and said, there's nothing. And then he said, go again. He came back and said, there's nothing. He said, go again. He came back and said, nothing. He said, go again. Now, it's half hour going, half hour coming back. For seven hours of prayer and travail, Elijah travailed before God and said, God, you got to change this thing. Where are the prayer warriors in here? Where are the intercessors that know how to grab hold to the altar and don't let go till a miracle breakthrough? I'm telling you, if you can pray, God can send rain. If you can pray, God can save your husband. If you can pray, God can change your children. If you can pray, God can get your son off drugs. If you can pray, God can get your daughter delivered. If you can pray, God can shift your life and it can become better than it's ever been. Put your head between your knees and believe God because something's about to happen that has never happened before. It's not enough for the famine to be over. We need some rain. Seven times.
time he says I see a cloud about the size of a man's hand little but Elijah said that's all I need some of us are considered crazy because we begin to praise God with just a little sign but I came to encourage somebody the prayer will bring the breakthrough to the rain but the praise will make the rain come down fast if I can get some folk in here that have been through famine that are waiting for God to do something special to forget about what time it is for just a few moments because five minutes of praise may change your life forever if you can just give God praise for what you don't even see yet if you can just give God praise for just a little sign of relief and deliverance I don't have all the money but a hundred dollars came I see the sign about the size of a man's hand my husband ain't saved yet but last night he said pray for me I see the sign about the size of a man's hand I didn't get the promotion but the boss said look for something to happen in the next few days you better praise God on the little you see upon your mouth and it's celebrate God in expectation a downpour is coming but you gotta praise him with a size hand whatever your dream whatever your vision whatever God has laid before you start making steps of preparation because I'm telling you, it's getting ready to pour. I was in Jersey preaching on Friday. Terry took me and that rain was coming down like crazy. And when I got in the house of the Lord, the Lord spoke to me prophetically and said, I let the storm Pass, but I gave you the rain. The storm would have brought destruction, but the rain makes things grow. The rain makes the ground fertile. I'm taking you away from the storm, but bringing that in your life that's going to make you fertile and productive. And I mean it just kept raining and it just kept raining. And I'm telling you, that's about to happen in our lives. Because first naturally, then spiritually. That outpour just kept coming. And when you think it's going to stop, God's going to pour some more. The famine is over.